Hi, I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage. Today we're going to have a technical seminar covering the GM Hydromatic four-speed transmission used in the Silver Clouds and the early post-war cars. We're going to service it and we're going to take the valve body, the little control unit, apart and I'm going to discuss how it works. I'll, sh I'll do some air checks and I'll show you how things kind of work inside. This is his car. He's the donor car here. His car's in for service and uh, the transmission was shifting real harsh and didn't downshift properly. So much of the shifting quality is controlled by the throttle valve. Where you put your foot on the gas. First of all, if the linkages are loose or out of adjustment, it's just going to confuse everything. Because you're going to have your, your, your uh, governor tell, tell the transmission it's going to a certain speed, and if you're at the wrong throttle, it's going to be confused. And, and the real herky-jerky is what I call it. Mm -hmm. Especially that 2-3 shift is the worst. <coughs> Because in the 2-3 shift, you have four things happen at once. What's happening, I forget. Here we go. I always refer. The 2-3 shift, you have the front band, which is the outside part, come on. When it was off before. You have the front clutch come off when it was on before. You have the rear band come off when it was on before. And then you have the rear clutch come on when it was off before. So that's the most complicated shift. And if inside the valve body, any valve has got a burr on it or sludge and is not moving it to its proper specifications, then it just, it's all confused. So back to the throttle valve being so important. If the car is missing and you're driving it, obviously it has less power, so you can have more throttle pressure. Now, that'll confuse the car, the, the transmission. It's going to shift harsh. It's, it's going to be confused. How often do you have to address that problem? Every time, every time I service one, I adjust that. Um, there is, in the floorboard, underneath the driver, whether it's on the right or on the left. No, actually, it's, all, it's on the left side, no matter what. If you pull up the carpet, um, all the carpet, the filler is on the right side of the hump where you add transmission and check it. On the left side, there is a little access plate that's about this big with six screws. You can take that off and you can get to the band adjustments down from there. Uh, I do them from underneath. It's a little harder, but I, I can do it by feel. I've done it so many times. And then off to the left of that, there's a little rubber plug you lift up. And there's a screw, set screw adjustment on a, on a lever, and you can adjust your TV shift there. That is presupposing everything else is in proper order mm -hmm. up the line. And many times I, I run into, you know, we'll get into it a little bit once we get, start getting into part. But uh, every time you service it is when you want to adjust that. At what point do you actually go the next step on these transmissions and say, look, I need to rebuild it completely or I just need to put in a couple of new bands and restore it? Well, you can't just put in bands and you can't just put in clutches without taking the whole thing apart. You have to take the whole thing apart. So generally they're rebuilt. Changing to a modern thing on these old cars can be done. The problem is, is the brakes work off of the transmission on the silver cloud. You have a mechanical assist um, with a hydraulic attachment for the wheels and there are companies that do it. They do. They just take all that out, put a modern engine in it with a modern transmission, put a, a hydrovac type brake booster underneath, and it works works fine. Uh, of course, when you go to resell a car, generally you're going to lose money on it, and generally the cars that are like that go to limousine companies because they service, they run the heck out of those cars. And they want something that's not going to break down, not going to cost them more like to fix. Most people that aren't limo companies buy these cars for aesthetic value and, and workmanship, and they generally want to keep them fairly original. That's a complicated, it's a pretty big deal to change the whole braking system. All right, now we'll cut to over here and we'll start, I'll start making a mess. Ronnie, don't the rear shock members run out the transmission as well to adjust the ride, the ride fitting? On the early post wars, yes. Okay. 
right, so the R-Type and Mark VI, the Wraith, they have an extra control lever on the steering that there's a pump on the transmission that pumps pressure. So what it does is when you operate that, it, it adds pressure to the rear shocks that work a valve and change the damping effect. On the Silver Clouds, they went to an electric, so it's an off or on. Oh, okay. There's an electric switch on on the yeah. steering column, yeah. and uh, and and it's an on-off switch. It's not right. a variable. Right. It's it's a soft and a hard, and and soft is down and hard is up. So. So what I'm going to do? Here's your sump. Up in here, you can see you've got some shift linkages, and here's a throttle valve linkage up there. Uh, so when you service one of these things, you want to pull the pan off, obviously drain it there. You want to pull this cover off and you rotate the flywheel to the certain spot and you'll see there's a drain plug. So you can drain the converter on these. Most modern cars you can't unless you take it out. So there's a nice drain plug right here. And these things hold usually about 12 quarts, so there's a lot of fluid in there. So you know, it likes to come out in a hurry. <laughs> I'll tell it. I used to have, when I worked for my dad years ago, most mechanics don't like people that wait. And so they're always over your shoulder asking questions, and if you make a mistake, they get to see it. So this one guy was a little annoying, and he'd always bring his car in, want an oil change when it's hot. and. One day I accidentally taught him a lesson. Uh -oh. <laughs> I forgot to warn him when I pulled the drain plug out of the engine and it splashed and he, he got some oil on his shirt and it was hot. And he never hovered over me again. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? So now you got about 12 of us hovering over you. <laughs> well, you're standing back and I warned you, right? There's, there's a big difference. I warned you. <laughs> This is a so be nice to your mechanics. That's right. <laughs> do you oh. replace the fluid or do you ever put it right back in? I mean, do you reuse this fluid ever? Only if I know it's brand new. Oh, okay. In other words, if I work on a car and I have an issue, I'll reuse it, put it in a clean bucket and reuse it. But other than that, no, no, no I would okay. not. I would not do that. And the Bob's was serviced last time he was in, but that was like almost four years ago, three, three and a half. Three and a half. Ah. But uh, four years ago. Yeah, that's why it's so clean. It smells pretty good, so it's not burned up. Now, when we get into pulling this cover off, I want you to notice this is a right-hand drive car as opposed to a left-hand drive car. So you're going to see that there's a cross linkage here that goes to the steering column. And I want you to show you this. See all that play in there? That's something you got to look out if you have a right-hand drive car. The left-hand drive car won't have this. It comes straight down the, from the frame here. Um, there are rubber bushings that hold some of these linkages, and it's good to replace those, obviously. Hi, hi Willie. Um, because you want it to be in the gear that you select, obviously, when, you, when you're doing that. So I'm going to take that off, and normally what I'll do is you can buy the bushings or you can put some O-rings or rubber hose in there, whatever, just to get this a little bit tighter. I usually take this off right here. These have set screws and lock nuts. These, and once I get one off, you'll see it's it's kind of like a ball joint. It fits into a groove. There you go. Do that. And this is the gear selector. So when you put it in neutral, four, three, two, or reverse, this is what linkage does that. So let's see. We'll take this one off. Is this one where you put it in reverse for the park position? E e yes. The hydromatic did not have a true park, park right. until the engine was off. And then you put it in reverse. And once we're in there, I'll show you how that mechanism works. Okay. Uh, when the engine is running, there's a lever that get, or a piston that gets pushed out because of pressure. 
built up by the torque converter in the pump, or not the pump, yeah, the torque converter. And uh, so it releases that lock. And as soon as you turn the engine off, pressure goes to zero and that lock comes in and it locks the drive shaft. Because if you go on to all of it, this is, goes back, you can see the drive shaft is locked. But, oh, I probably have the parking brake on, oops. Anyways, uh, when you put it back here, that's reverse. That locks it, the drive shaft. So back to these ball joints. What we have here, I don't know if we, we got to do this for the camera. You see there's a, it looks like a key slot. See that? What happens is the ball goes in here and then this set screw pushes it up into there. So it keeps it in place and you can adjust how much plays in it. And there's, there's a ball. Okay, so that comes out. So what we're doing now is pulling off this bell housing cover so we can get to the torque converter drain plug and drain that fluid out also. And there are usually eight uh, slotted screws originally, but most of these have been changed to a hex head over the years because someone has lost them or find them too difficult to put back in. Is there a torque requirement for those? Or there is somewhere, but it's a quarter inch bolt. Quarter 28, so maybe six, eight pounds. Okay. So as you can see, there's your bell housing cover. Has a big hole in it. And you can see there's a little pointer in here. Yeah. On the flywheel are your timing marks. This car, you do not set the timing with a timing light while it's running. Uh, this is static timed. So you have to turn the flywheel in the proper direction which is counterclockwise from, yeah, anyways, it goes this way. To get to your proper timing mark, and then you go up on top, and you use a time or a, a test light and turn the distributor until the light comes on. Then you know the point's open, and that's, that's how you set it. Kind of a pain in the butt, if you ask me.